Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book, We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Now, it's been a while since our last episode, and I am sorry about that. You may or may not know that my mom and I run a catering business working with race car teams, travel around the United States, and we just finished our busy season. So I've had several listeners writing to me wondering whether I'm okay and I'm great, but I have been very busy. So fear not, as long as I am plant on planet Earth, I'm going to continue to share great interviews with great guests. I want to just have a shout out to some of the listeners who have financially supported this show. You may not know this, but I support the show myself. I'm not someone who uses commercials. So uh, I appreciate any spare income from your donations. I'm going to keep these episodes going commercial free. And if you're you are somebody who would like to donate, you can simply go to paypal.me forward slash Sandra Champlain. So another exciting announcement in 2019, I will be sharing the stage with scientist Sonia Rinaldi physical medium and tutor Scott Milligan, and some other great people at the very first We Don't Die live events. Event number one will be held in Boston, Massachusetts, February 22nd through 24th, 2019. And event number two will be held in Orlando, Florida, March 29th through 31st. You can find out more about these events at either wedontdieboston.com or we don't die orlando.com. Now, on to the show. Our guest today is Arizona Bell. Arizona is the co founder and editorial director of Spirit Guides Magazine, co host of Spirit Guides Radio, and a certified grief recovery coach. Her background is in creative nonfiction writing, and she has been published extensively in print and digital magazines, including the Los Angeles Review. Grief Digest, Elephant Journal, and The Establishment. Arizona participated on the George Norrie Expert Afterlife Panel at the 2018 Afterlife Research and Education Institute's Symposium. That's where I met her, as well as presented on harnessing the energy of grief to deepen our spiritual connection and truly live life. She is the author of the ebook, This Is How You Be. A Simple Guide to True Happiness, written after the death of her mother. Her website is spiritguidesmagazine.com. Arizona Bell, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here, Sandra. It's such an honor. I'm excited to have big, you. Yeah, I am a big fan of you and a big fan of this show, so it's really cool. And as you mentioned, I do my own podcast where I interview people, so it's cool to be on the other end of the mic. It really is. I've had that opportunity as well. And it's fun. And we're sharing something we love that we have in common. And it was great to meet you at the symposium face-to-face. Oh, my gosh. It's so great to meet you face-to-face. And your outfit for the little uh, come-as-you-were was awesome. So I just got to say that. Yes, it was like a Halloween party, but it was a come as you were as in a past it life. Was. So <laughs> I drove, I dressed as a 20s flapper. It was, it was a really yeah. great and a big shout out to our friends at the AREI for introducing us. And you did a great job being on the expert panel with George Norrie from Coast to Coast AM, just throwing you questions and you answered them so great. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was a big moment for me. Um, actually, I grew up with my father listening to Art Bell, um, like all day long, <laughs> to the point where I was pretty annoyed um, on Coast to Coast. So just to be on the George Norrie panel at all was just really an honor. And he's hilarious. And I hope that I kept up with him. But <laughs> he's he's a funny guy. So you it's, did. You know, yeah. It's quite- it's quite a challenge. But yeah, it was so fun. Everybody on the panel was awesome. I was sitting right next to Scott, who was just, you know, cracking me up. So Scott Milligan, as I know all mm-hmm. your listeners know. But yeah, it was a really good time and just such an honor. And the words you shared really helped. I mean, there was an audience of close to 700 people. And this is something important for everybody. There's not going to be a single one of us. There's not a single one of us who won't be touched at some point with having a 
loved one pass away and experiencing grief. And I think just as human beings, we all question life and the afterlife. So the questions were great and your answers were great. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was really, the questions were great. You know, it's, it's, people are out there in the audience asking great questions and it's, and so is George and it's just such an honor to even be looked to as an expert in that way. So it was really, really humbling and great experience for me. But like you said, Grief is going to touch everyone. Um, and, you know, yeah, some of us are curious about the afterlife here and there, but it really is those moments of grief and loss that bring us to the gateway of studying such an important topic, death, life, you know? Yeah, I, ditto. I totally agree with that 100%. So how about, you know, let's... I said... Go ahead. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, in, yeah, in my solo presentation that I did at AREI about... Um, you know, kind of leveraging loss and harnessing the energy of grief and the emotion of grief to, you know, come more in line with your spirituality and, and the afterlife and all that is, you know, I kind of joked, I said, like, whoever thought that they'd be here in this room paying money to talk about death, you know, it really, it does take that moment of, you know, whether it's rock bottom or just loss in a way that you could have never imagined and or death and grief to really like sit there and stare the afterlife question and in the eyeballs, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of us tend to want to avoid it. Like, uh, I don't want to go there yet. If things are smooth sailing, right. Um, grief rips away all of that. And it really puts you there in the room with death. And, and then you say, yeah, where'd my mom go? Where'd my dad go? Mm -hmm. Where'd my, my child or my partner go when they died? And when we do look at that, when we, when we are brought to that moment, however, we're brought there, you know, it, it's the biggest informant on how to actually live our lives well and why we're here. Yes. Is that how your story got started? If you could give us a little bit of your backstory and then how you ended up getting interested in the afterlife and helping people with grief and to creating Spirit Guides magazine. Sure. Yeah, it definitely all goes together. Um, I did not plan on being a grief writer and researcher and coach (laughs) definitely wasn't in my uh, trajectory when I was in my, you know, mid twenties, I thought I had it all figured out. I was a writer and I wrote about love and I wrote about, you know, just all of these sweet, beautiful things. And that was what I was going to do, you know? And, um, and I did, and I, and I climbed up in my career and I did all the things I wanted to do and was supposed to do. Um, and I just never had a thought about this. Of course, I had a little bit of an inkling towards spirituality, but it was, you know, kind of surface level cause nothing was really, you know, bad. So it was just kind of like skipping along. Um, and then when I was 28, yeah, just turned 28, maybe even 27, my mom, who was my absolute best friend, um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And before that time I had zero experience with loss or death, like zero, like, uh, a one family dog. Like I, like I didn't know anybody who had died. And, and because of that, the person, the most important person in my life, my rock, um, I mean, she was like my soulmate mom. Like we were best friends. Somebody said, uh, actually a medium said, this isn't about saving one life. It's about saving two or just, it was that big of a deal. And so when, when she got diagnosed, I just, I had no tools to deal with it. I had no idea. I mean, it was, my world came crashing down. So Mm -hmm. we dealt uh, with the illness for three years, three and a half. And, and eventually um, she passed away. And, and when that, and that was three years ago or yeah, about three and a half years ago. And, um, and yeah, and for me, it was it was just a domino effect. I, I ended up experiencing what they call cumulative grief because I, after my mom died, I ended up losing um, my my long term relationship and a child that was involved in that relationship. And then, you know, I lost um, two of my dogs died in that year. I lost all my money. Like wow. it was just it was this whole big domino of loss, and I had never lost anything before. And of course, when you go through something like that, you also, your friendships are up for for debate. Uh, you know, it's like, why aren't people coming mm-hmm. around after my mom died and things like that? So there's just a lot of loss at, in my life in a very, very, very condensed amount of time. So for me, who was every, I've never experienced anything like that. Um, it really hit me, and 
it brought me to the lowest low and uh, definitely was rock bottom, suicidal, everything like that. And, and yeah. And so what happened was I, you know, I just, I had this moment where it was like, I want to die. And I pretty much just said, like, just said that to God or whoever. I, I didn't know. I was just like, I fucking want to die. I don't know if I can curse. I'm sorry. But I was <laughs> like, I want to die. I want to die. And, and then in that moment, it was like this big whoosh surrender came over me. And I just like, I slept like a baby for the first time in that moment when I surrendered and I woke up the next day with a, with just an, a refreshing outlook. And then what happened was about a week afterwards, when I got this sort of refreshing thing from surrender, like this feeling of, no, you're supposed to be here still. I went to lunch with a friend and she said, hey, and and she was the only friend that I knew that had lost a parent mm -hmm. and I lost anybody that they loved so close. And she said, hey, you need to go see this medium her name's Suzanne Wilson. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you have to wait a year. <laughs> and I said, what? So, so long story short, I, I wait a year. And it, within that year, I started working on um, Spirit Guides magazine. And this was an idea that I had um, m for maybe five years. And I just never really had the guts to do it. I, um, you know, I was working in a corporate job and I, I just didn't do it. And then that's one thing that happens with grief. All of the things that don't matter, they go away. And you, and I experienced fearlessness. I had already lost everything. So I took, I was able to take the risks that I needed to take to be my most authentic self and do what I actually wanted to do in life. So I was working on this project and then, yeah. And I, I went and saw Suzanne and for anyone who's had a reading with Suzanne knows like it changed my life mm -hmm. and my, at that point in time, because I had been researching the afterlife since my mom died, and, you know, I, I was open to it. And at that point in time, I was like, okay, this is the most important thing in the world. <laughs> and and that's just how it happened for me. So I just dove into that world, and Suzanne Wilson took me under her wing a little bit, and here I am. <laughs> Arizona, could you share maybe what – Suzanne said that really had you believe that your mom was still around because I think sure because I, I know yeah. there are mediums out there like a lot of my skepticism on mediums is there can be vague statements and right so how and not every medium unfortunately has integrity uh, many many do so and I'm not throwing them under the bus because I totally believe in mediums but what was it that had you say oh my gosh she's here yeah yeah I appreciate that um because uh, at the time also I should mention I was living in Sedona Arizona so I had seen my fair share of readers or mediums or whatever you want to call the different kinds of readers and uh you are exactly right there's there's a lot of um general statements and fishing and just like things not really in integrity. Right. Um, and I experienced a lot of that. So when my friend said, you got to go to this meeting medium, I was like, ah, you know, I've, I've kind of went around to some other ones and I don't know. And she's like, no, trust me. So, I mean, I, I can only tell you that within the first like five minutes of being in that chair, it was like, she gave me more specific details than I, things I didn't even know to tell you the truth, some of them, you know, and I went and checked in with my family and yeah, it's true. And one thing I'll, I'll tell you that was really, really profound. I mean, there was so much, the entire hour was evidential, but one thing was that the, about four days, maybe five, uh, before my meeting with her, I went and spread my mom's ashes mm -hmm. and I did not tell anybody that I did it except for my stepmom. And in my reading with Suzanne, she named the place and the time and that I had my dogs with me, like very, very specific, all of the details and how much my mom loved it. And, you know, I went home and I told my stepmom, hey, and she goes, hey, I promise you, she didn't call me up. I didn't tell her that, you know, and I, I, when I was in the chair, I think about this too, because I'm a writer, I'm a public person. So I, I always think about what did I say? What did I put out there? And and that was like just indisputable for me because I hadn't told anybody. That's great. I, I'm just reminded I 
have never had my dad come through in a public demonstration. Although I've had Suzanne and other mediums acknowledge things about my father, I have always said, Dad, you know, come through in one of these big presentations when somebody's on stage. And how I'm going to know it's you is you're going to say you were a pilot. Because people say, oh, your dad's with you. He loves you, things like that. So I was in the, the UK just a few weeks ago. And there's a medium from Holland that got up. And she says, I have a father here who says his daughter's in the room. And so many people raise their hand, you know, tons of people. And his first name's John. So they're about six hands still up in the air. He says he's a pilot. <laughs> My hand like, was the only one that stayed up in the air. And she says, may I work with you? I said, well, absolutely. She says, he's showing me the airplane he used to fly. He was a pilot for American Airlines. I mean, that's specific. Yeah. She gave details how many brothers and sisters I had, what I'm up to, what he did in the past, uh, and said, your dad sees you planning events in America and that he's by my side and my mission is to, how I went, this is my terminology, obviously, how I went from grief to believing in the afterlife and feeling love is my purpose to give that to others. So he'll be by Mm -hmm. my side, well, forever, but while I'm doing this. And I was absolutely shocked, delighted, stunned. And and then she went on to the next person. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh. (laughs) That's exactly a great way to put it, like delighted and stunned. There's no greater feeling than knowing you're talking to your person, you know? And like when I was with Suzanne, she brought through my mom's personality too. And to me, that's evidence, you know, like explaining her personality, like, oh man, she's like this hippie, but like corporate, like she's just explaining my mom to me in detail. And I never wrote Mm -hmm. about her in those ways publicly, you know, all these things that were close to my chest that, that just nobody literally knew. And no stranger could ever know. Um, And so it is. It's so profound. And in that moment, you're just, I don't, I've never experienced anything more profound than the understanding that life goes on after physical death. And that's why I'm so jazzed about it. Yeah. And to share. And now, how did that impact you personally on your grief, having those connections made with your mom? Absolutely was the greatest healer. Um, And I... I went through all kinds of therapy. I did all of the things. I studied to become a grief training coach, recovery coach. Like I did all of the things. And, you know, in my, in my own research and in research that I've built my research on, it there like the Winbridge Institute for instance, for instance, it's the number one thing that relieves grief is knowing exper- through ex- experience whether your own after death communication or an you know an induced one with a medium of some kind mm-hmm. knowing that consciousness survives death that is the greatest healer in grief and that that is why yeah it's so the work that you're doing and that I'm trying to step into doing it's I find it is a really big deal because that gives people the courage to go on in life and live their life to the fullest absolutely i know very often when somebody dies the person that's left remaining dies inside. And Mm -hmm. I've met people who have been grieving 30 years. And then through whether it's my book or show or another program, once they really get that the afterlife is real, that their loved one is in that invisible space cheering them on, it's like they get to live life again. And Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. That's such a beautiful thing and such a good point. You know, we don't, we don't heal in time as the platitude goes. We heal in timelessness. We heal when we connect to that eternity, to that timelessness. That right. is my biggest belief. Right. And, you know, I think with with grief, you know, grief support in society is kind of an epic failure. And we do offer a lot of platitudes. And, you know, somebody can hold on to the grief for 30 years and not heal, like you said. And, and in that moment of recognition, however it comes to them about the 
you know, continuity of consciousness, it can just like a snap of your fingers, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful and it's so important. And I think creating a community like you have with Spirit Guides Magazine and having a resource really helps because left to our own devices, we are all human beings with, oh, we can have negative thoughts and we can have negative thought patterns and habits and all that. And we are, I, I believe there is a real chemical break when we have a loved one that's no longer physically here that you can talk to and touch and you know, smell their cologne and taste their cooking and all that kind of stuff. So it, it is difficult. And there is like a new practice to put in talking to someone that may not be visibly in front of you. So it takes something sometimes of catching those negative thoughts and go, okay, wait a minute, they're here. So I really want to acknowledge you for creating Spirit Guides magazine and having something people can turn to and the tools because you share so much that can help people kind of get out of our own heads, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And, and I appreciate you recognizing that. I mean, I think I created what I wanted ultimately. And, um, you know, I've been kind of a lone wolf on Mm -hmm. my spiritual path and especially, um, you know, my grief, like many others was pretty privatized and, um, I felt, I felt pretty isolated and alone. And, um, so I, I kind of made the community I needed and, uh, I, you know, at the time I just, I really, you know, I'm, I was gearing it more towards millennials and people my age Mm -hmm. because there's a big void in the spiritual market, um, geared towards that generation. And it's not, and it's not because we don't want it. We do. We're just not resonating with how it's coming out. So my initial goal here was to, was to create that and was to create a community where we could safely explore in our own way, spirituality and all the things. Um, but you know, as I've grown on my own journey and as I've, really come through my grief and come out the other end. And I'm now, you know, in, in the sunrise and everything's looking bright. Like I, I've incorporated more and more, um, afterlife studies and research and grief and death and dying, all of the things. And, you know, I've tried to partner with AREI and you, and I, it's becoming more and more a part of what we're doing because, I think it really is what sets us apart. And we've had some practitioners say that, that we work with, like your focus on the things that are really hard for people to look at is why we like you (laughs) because it's some of the most important stuff to look at. I totally agree. And it is a private matter. I just thinking of the symposium, most people who came, came by themselves and trusted those of us who are sharing it, that this is a safe place you can come by yourself because it's our grief journey. And I think most of us are brought together by grief. It's a, a very private one. You know, we don't, we aren't raised with grief information. We aren't raised with how to deal with the loss of a loved one, even though we don't really lose them, but we lose them physically. And so I know uh, when my grandmother and my dad passed away, there weren't people that we could, uh, that I could really connect with people. You know, you said right in the beginning, you know, why aren't people coming around? There's a lot of friendships that seem to disappear. And I, and I, I think mm-hmm. people may not know how to deal with someone who's grieving. And so they may, you know, disappear in our life. Did you, do you find that that's a, a truth to why, you know, some of our closest friends may not be so close when a loved one passes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do find that. I find um, what I have found and what I've researched since is that it's not that people don't want to help mm-hmm. generally. Mm-hmm. It's that people don't know how to. And right. there's, a, right. there's a, a societal reason for that. I mean, especially in the modern age, we don't have – we've kind of done away with our mourning rituals and our grief rituals that we had before, you know, historically. And so, and in the modern era, it's, yeah, everything's kind of individualized and privatized. So, um, and there's really no tools for, for grief. We don't learn about it. We don't talk about it. Um, so I think it's a lot of people don't know what to do. And so what we end up with is a lot of empty platitudes. And for instance, I'll give you one, which has become my biggest pet peeve is Hmm. let, let me know if you need anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, when you're talking to a grieving person, they do need something. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes the hardest thing in the world to figure out what they what you need as a grieving person and the emotional labor that goes into that when you're 
you're just devastated and can't even function. Literally, like you feel dead, as you said. Oh, I felt like a zombie. So mm-hmm. if you say, let if you say, let me know if you need anything, and then I don't hear from you six months. Well, of course, I'm not going to ask you for anything. Like. Right. It, it's just it's one of those things that does more harm than good, even though the intentions are good. So these people aren't bad for saying it. It's just that's that's our best tool we have when really, you know, gr- what grievers need. They don't need advice. They don't need it. They just need you to be there. They just need you to listen. And yes. they just need to, all of their feelings to be acknowledged and heard in a safe, sacred space. That's mm-hmm. all, you know. And but unfortunately, that's not common knowledge. So hopefully that can change. Yes. And we're both onto it. And, you know, I really do like that we are connecting and the folks who are within AREI and beyond, because we all offer something a little bit different, but we're all sharing each other, joining arm in arm, really trying to impact humanity. And this is so big. And I can't help but think from my personal journey and yours and so many others that it takes something severe, like the pain of grief to kind of crack us open inside and allow our questions to bloom, our spirituality to bloom, whatever that means for everybody, but to start looking for our own answers. Yeah, I, I've definitely, um, one thing that I have, that I have changed my opinion on and I, and has really become a cornerstone stone of my life since my mom passed and all of the things that I've experienced and learned from then is that, you know, the, the we're, we're at a, we're in an earth school and we have mm-hmm. lessons. There are going to be challenges. There's going to be hard times. That's kind of the point. And so I think we, we go around, around a lot saying, why me, why me? Well, why not me? You know, we're, we're kind of, suffering is kind of a thing that happens here in humanity. Yes. And I think, I think the big, the big, you know, aha is, you know, these, these lessons are blessings, you know, they really are like when we are able to turn our mind around on it and say, oh, this is a really big growth opportunity for me because I don't know about you, Sandra, but I've never done more growing in my life than when I went through this huge bout of grief. I agree. And on the other end, my life is really amazing because of it. And I you know, I you you don't say this to someone actively grieving, but in my experience now on the other end of it, my grief has been a gift to my life. Mm-hmm. And I really do think I really do believe in that concept of looking at our challenges as, you know, opportunities to grow and bloom as you said. Mm-hmm. And any one of us can look back in our life and say, oh my gosh, if that had never happened, I would never be here. I would have never met this person. This wouldn't have happened. And most of those things really stem from the horrible times we've had. So if you are somebody who's presently grieving, it might be really hard to think there's some kind of gift in the grief right now because it hurts beyond belief. And mm-hmm. But to have a, just a little bit of faith that what could open up in the future is something great. And right now, Arizona, I have some of the best friends now that I wouldn't have had. I have feel so much a part of something. And when mm-hmm. I think it's normal, when you find your passion, you're actually happy in life. So I, I went to, I'm, I'm in a place that I'm happy in life and that feels good and connected to yeah. so many great people. So, um, yeah, that's what I have yeah. to say about that. That's what I have to say. Yeah, and you're right. Like, um, so many people came to the AREI conference and the events that you're going to have. I'm sure it'll be the same. And 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 events of similar nature. They they come alone because grief is what m- leads most of us to this place, and and it's a lonely thing. But the community. I mean, I think I've been to a lot of conferences in my life, and I'm sure you have too. Yes. Like. The community in these conferences, I've been to Helping Parents Heal and AREI and all of these. I mean, the community and the and the actual like real friendships, you know, like like you're saying, I have friendships now that I would have never had. And these are real strong friendships because it's built on a bond that is it's miraculous. So it, it's just it's really inspiring to see these groups of people coming together and linking arms and saying me too and and uh, and ultimately leveraging their losses to make the world a better place. 
It is great. And you mentioned helping parents heal. If you are a listener and a child has passed into the spirit world, it's a great organization, helpingparentsheal.org provides so much community support, grief support, but they do believe in the afterlife and have great evidence to go along with that. And it's a really great organization to be part of for free uh, and and get involved with. I mean, really a great group of people. Arizona, will you tell us a little bit about Spirit Guides Magazine? What it is? Sure, I will. What goes on on the website, spiritguidesmagazine.com. Yeah. Yes, I will. Yeah, spiritguidesmagazine.com has uh, evolved into a, a little bit of a, a media company, but we do, um, we publish articles from all various types of spiritual healers and writers and authors. And uh, we have a directory of spiritual healers and teachers. So if you are, for instance, looking for a healer in Orlando, you can get on, click our map and find out what, what we have going on there. We have um, a membership community called the Cosmic Collective, where we get together um, every month. We have live sessions on Zoom, and we have all kinds of stuff from uh, new moon ceremonies to mediumship readings, um, all spirit guides readings, all the things. Basically, a little taste of everything in the spiritual world so people can kind of dig deep and and figure out their path. So we do that. And then we also have Spirit Guides Radio, which I co-host. And that is, yeah, we do that every Wednesday at 9 a.m. live Pacific time. And it's that's been just the greatest joy. I had no idea I would be doing that. They're <laughs> like fun, said, aren't I they? Just around- <laughs> They're so fun. Yeah. yeah. No, I just, and, and, you know, that, that was, you know, very synchronistic. That opportunity was presented to me after, um, in 2017 when I spoke at AREI on the millennial panel. So I just, I had no idea that it's, it's kind of a beautiful thing when you kind of, you know, let spirit take it away. Like I had no idea I'd be doing a podcast, but no. now we do that and it's so fun and we interview all kinds of people. We're going to have you on in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, it's, we, we try to, the goal of Spirit Guides Magazine is to make spiritual information accessible to the most people and to help the most people. That's my goal with it because this stuff, as we've been talking about, is what has completely transform, transformed my life. So I want to help other people get that knowledge, you know, at a re, at, in a, in a accessible way, basically. So yes. that's what we've been doing and it's been really, really great and really fun. Are your episodes on the website or do you have to be live Wednesday at 9 a.m.? No, you, you don't have to be live. Um, <laughs> you can listen live, but we do have them on the website, spiritguidesmagazine.com forward slash radio. And we uh, link to iTunes and we, they're all there on the on the website. And we've had a lot of great people that I know that you've had on your show mm-hmm. and that are affiliated with all these programs. Um, like Mark, Dr. or Mark, P- Mark Pickstick. Pitt- mm-hmm. I can Pitt-stick. never say his name. Pitstick. Mark Pitstick. <laughs> it's like a tongue twister for me. And Suzanne Wilson and Craig Hogan. You know, we've, Great we've had all the people. people. So, yeah. So my my secret goal <laughs> is to – because I'm I'm also dealing – I didn't mention this, but my Spirit Guides magazine is, is um, largely a millennial audience. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we do a lot about life too, but my secret – Thing is to sneak in all the afterlife stuff that I can. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, what constitutes a millennial? Um, I was just reading that today. I think it's like you're born in 1981 to 1994 something. or something. But yeah. for for us, our main bracket, um, a, a demographic is like 22 to 36. So mm-hmm. that's and when you're talking spiritual, those aren't the people that are usually topping the charts on that. It's something I feel like we usually dive really deep into as we progress through life. So, um, but as I was telling you before, like I just saw a little bit of a void in that market because mm-hmm. I see a lot of people that want this stuff. They just they're coming at it from a little bit of a different angle, I think. So right. we kind of try to do that. And then I'm just super sly and try to sneak in all the afterlife stuff. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you can be young at heart also to enjoy Spirit Guides magazine if you oh, are yeah. over that age. Well, it is, you know, we resonate with different people. It could be the same material, but just coming from a different angle. It, it doesn't matter. Right. We're out to impact. And for those who are younger, even young at heart, boy, once we get this information, 
to, it, it's like a really huge um, growth <laughs> for the soul, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like going through an education really fast. You know, you don't have to live in grief for 10 years to work out what you believe in. I mean, you can be, you could hear stories and read articles and things like that. And sometimes learning through other people's experiences, you know, we can get to the other side much faster, you know, and just, uh, just, yeah, grow a little bit faster. So I think yeah. wherever our listeners and readers are at this point is the perfect part point for us. You know, you can't say, Oh, I should have done this when I was 20 years old. And now I'm, you know, 50 or whatever that may be. Right. Everybody, yeah. you who's listening right now, you are in the perfect place Today is the perfect day for what's possible in your future. Arizona, what about your ebook? Could you tell us about that? Sure, I can. Yeah. Um, so the ebook is called This Is How You Be A Simple Guide to True Happiness. And I always joke that it's it, it's it sounds like a really nice fluffy title, but it's actually pretty it's pretty deep and dark mm -hmm. <laughs> because the deal the deal with the book um is that it is basically the book that um, I wrote, um, from all of my lessons through my grieving process mm -hmm. on how to actually live your best life. So, and the reason it's called, this is how you be, I know it's a little awkward, but is because, um, of the, of the human beingness that we are overlooking in our really, really busy world where we're constantly human doings. Um, so I kind of, it is simple. It's a, it's a quick read and I, I kind of just break down, um, the life lessons that I've learned from looking death in the eyeballs and, and how grief, um, pretty much strips away what doesn't matter from your life and what doesn't matter in life. Yes. And, and, and for me, and I really truly believe that grief, when you have lost in this major way, um, it, it gives you the invitation to start living a fearless life. And that's a huge gift it's a huge gift because we are, uh, most of us, you know, going around pretty fear based. And that mm -hmm. is, um, that's, it, it contradicts joy. So, um, yeah. So the book is, is kind of about my journey to, um, to this place and how, you know, um, how my journey has really brought me to a place of unexpected happiness and, and authentic happiness, not, you know, oh, I got a new boat, so I'm happy, but like <laughs> true happiness. So yeah, so I didn't intend to write it. I actually, I opened a document up and, and was going to write an essay for a magazine at the time. Uh, that was my goal. And it, it just flew out of me. And I was like, okay, this is now, <laughs> this is now a book. So that's, it was, it was a joy to write. And yeah. Where can we find it? Oh, you can find it on, you can find it on spiritguidesmagazine.com forward slash shop. Okay. And yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a quick, it's a quick read, but it's, it's pretty deep. Um, and it, it definitely will give you a little bit better of a picture of, of me and what goes on in my head. And yeah. And so that's out and official. And now I'm just starting to work on, on the next proposals. So I'm it's all so good. I'm still a writer. I just, yep. and you know, it's funny. I, I said in the beginning, you know, I thought I was going to be writing about love and I was all, you know, but you know, grief is love. Every grief story is a love story. I mean, that's, it's, it's this, it, it's, I'm, I am still doing it. It's just on a way more profound level. And so, you know, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm super you say that because I realized that when we grieve the hardest, it's because of our capacity to love. And I think being here on earth, one of the big missions we have is to really love full out. And you can directly correlate how much the pain of grief hurts to how much you have, have loved. So you know, that's important. One of my, one of my favorite lines from a fiction book is why is the measure of love loss? Oh, and wow. I read it when I was in my twenties and I had no idea how it was going to come mm -hmm. to affect my life because it is so true. And what you just said is so true. And how, I mean, I'm obviously an opti optimist now about grief, but how beautiful is that, that, you know, we love hard. We love really hard. We do. And, 
And so this is well, the this is the cost. Love you know? is not lost. And I think I, I heard a great quote that something like, um, our lifetime is but a thread in the fabric of our soul. Meaning it's so short, and there's such a bigger picture. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that our loved ones are in this invisible space around us, same place where the wireless internet is and GPS signals and radio waves and all that. And they are cheering us on when we can practice quieting our minds and using our imaginations. We can actually tap into their realm and hear them and things. But if we could live life knowing that our life is for a purpose and when we close our eyes for those last moments and take our last breath, we just simply open them again and our loved ones are right there, our pets are right there. If we could live that way today, man, I think it would just be that like that's the way to live life. I mean, that's living full out, knowing that death is is an illusion. And I just want to go back to your um, talking about fear a little bit. After my dad died, I realized that I had never been in a long-term relationship. And I hired a dating coach. And it was what seemed like torture to go on four dates a week, which was like from the girl who didn't go on any to four dates that a week. sounds like torture, yeah, to anyone. Yeah, it was, it was. And although it didn't, you know, it hasn't yet ended up in happily ever after. She had said to me, you know, we got really into the fear I had of being vulnerable, being myself, letting love in. And what surfaced was this fear I had of being hurt. And she said to me, let me ask you a question. How bad and how painful was the death of your father? And I said, oh my God, it was the worst pain I have ever felt, and the tears went on and on. I was very close to my dad. And she says, and do you think the breakup from a relationship with, with a man would be more painful than that? And I said, oh, no, no, of course not. And she says, let me propose this to you, Sandra. You have survived an incredible loss, and you've made it through. Would you consider that there could be a lot of love out there? <laughs> and even if it does end, you know, that you re- you could really have some great experiences. And if you could handle this pain, you could handle a pain of a breakup. And it was like, oh my God. So that was like a very transformational thing that came out of my grief. So whether it's relationship or any other fear, I do think, like you say, grief and finding out what we're capable of, like if we can handle that, we can be fearless or courageous in going after things we want. We are powerful. We are capable. We are survivors. And any one of us who survived the death of someone we love, I mean, we're powerful and we can take on and go after our dreams. Don't you think? I do think absolutely. And I honestly, I think that is why I find so much beauty in this work is because I really truly believe that's why we're here. I really believe that, like you said, like our loved ones who have transitioned are on the other side, cheerleading us to Mm -hmm. be happy and courageous, as you said. And yeah, if you can't be fearless because there are fears we have, it's like a biological thing, but courageous and brave and, and to do and, and, the courage to be our authentic selves. And that means doing what makes, what lights you up. And we have so many reasons um, to not do those things. And, you know, so many practicalities. I know I got to do this and I got to do that. And, and I think that this is the point of life. And I think that's why this is such a gift because yeah, if we can survive this, I mean, there is no pain like that. Grief is the one it's, it rips you open. And if you can survive that and you can, everybody can, mm-hmm. then yeah, you can you can do your best life. You can actually come here and do what we're meant to do. And that is just really live it up and be happy <laughs> and be, be in joy, you know? Yeah. Live it up and be happy. I saw a great <laughs> quote from Neil Donald Walsh that was something like, having our dreams come true are outside of our comfort zone. 
So we need to take those risks to have those rewards and right. get out of what's comfortable for us. Yeah. And it's like J.K. Rowling's famous quote, you know, rock bottom was the foundation she built her life on. Well, her life's pretty great. It <laughs> is. Know? Yeah. So, you know, and she she had that rock bottom experience too. So there is there is hope. You know, I think that's the main thing is – don't feel hopeless because there is hope. Mm. Arizona, I want to ask you, besides uh, mediumship, do you have other things in your toolbox that you've connect collected, you know, other great reasons that you believe in the afterlife? Yeah, I mean, well, I told you about my uh, evidential mediumship mm -hmm. experience, and, and since then I've had many, um, so that obviously helps. And then since then I've sat in a physical mediumship circle, which I know you've covered here on your show, um, but that, I mean, there's no more doubt in my mind. Um, that's that's just it. But as far as my own um, communications or after-death communications, I have been over the past three years since my mom passed, I've received some communications from my mom myself right away. And, um, they, in dream visits right away, things like that. And to the point where, you know, it, it's not a dream that right. you, I just hung out with my mom the whole time, you know, like that's what happened up, uh, you know, and that happens to me to this day. I had very, very intense one lot, like two nights ago, which ended up in this whole series of signs from my mom throughout the day that were very, very, very impactful to my life and to the, to the work that I'm doing. So for me, and now, you know, I, I've deepened my meditation practice. And I think when you do that, you're, you're kind of just tuning your antenna to get a little bit more in mm -hmm. touch with, with that, with that world. So, um, for me, uh, my own abilities have I would say are blossoming right now. So it's really a beautiful because I would never in my life think that I would be able to communicate or have that ability. And I see it, you know, it was almost like after I got all of the confidence through communications via mediums, whether evidential or physical, then it was like, okay. And then I had the co the confidence to try it myself and it's, it's been wonderful. And how cool is that, that you can really practice communication? It's great. And one of the things I have in my plans for creating my own events, which will be recorded and available online in time so they can get to everybody, is to do some of these exercises that people can connect. Um, you know, we may not all be mediums, but I know we're all souls having a human experience. So whether it's like an ESP technique or remote viewing or tuning into the other side, but to give exercises that we can all tap into our own soul power. I think that's the best word to it, to realize <laughs> that we are not just the flesh and bones that we think we are. I think that's great. Yeah. And I, I would like, I think that is exactly what kind of events need to be happening now. And I, I honestly think people are hungry for it. And I've noticed mm -hmm. that in my community um, with Spirit Guides Magazine and the Cosmic Collective, like, yeah, people love when we do readings with mediums and stuff, but they're really into intuition development mm -hmm. and mediumship development. And, you know, just, yeah, how can, what, you know, one of our best read articles is how to, how to, like have a dream visit with your loved one in spirit, like how to set that up for success. So people want this. Wow. I didn't know you had that article in there. Is that easy to find? We just go into your website, Spirit Guides uh, Magazine. Yeah. Spiritguidesmagazine.com. And there's a little search function. You could type in uh, dream visit, but it's not up on the main page at the moment, but okay. it is on there. Okay. Um, so just yeah. type in dream visit in the search. Yes. That's yeah. something I and think yeah, we, have, we all want. Yeah, we totally want that. And and it's it's easier than you would think <laughs> when you have a teacher who really can tell you how to do it. And and I think that that's I think what that's what people really want. I mean, it awesome mediums are awesome, but we want to communicate ourselves too. And Exactly. Yeah. Not everyone's a medium and can go around reading everybody, but I think we like you said we all do have the ability to connect with our own ancestors and and spirit team and and that's what people want from what I'm seeing. Mhm. Mm and the problem, I don't want to say it's a problem with mediums, but I think it's normal for people to think the only way I can communicate with my loved one is 
to talk to a medium and it might be a year before I do it. Whereas your loved ones are right around you right now. They're not only available when you talk to a medium, they're around right now as you listen to this and to be able to create your own communication between them and talk to them. And I know people that actually sit at a kitchen table and have an empty cup across from them when they're enjoying their coffee and they're talking to their loved one daily and they close their eyes and say, okay, you know, move closer to me and I'll see if I can feel you. And, you know, just because, just because you cross over does not mean you have all the intelligence of the universe, but they are able yeah. to learn how to communicate and how to shift energy and to give them the experience of doing that. I think that's awesome. Well. I'm one of those people who pours a cup of coffee for my mom. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I love it. And because it really, it does, it just opens that space up. You know, it's like as a writer, I would always say, you know, no, I'm not inspired every morning right. to write. And I, every right. morning I don't write the best thing that I've ever written. But if I show up every morning, spirit knows I'm serious and it's the opportunities there. And I feel mm -hmm. it's the same way with whatever, you know, ritual or whatever you choose to do with your loved one. And for me, you know, my mom and I always had coffee in the morning. So I pour her coffee and I talk to her and, Aww. and sometimes Aww. things, you know, happen in my day that, that fe I feel more connected. And sometimes it's just, I open space for it. So I think it's a beautiful thing to do. When I started writing my book, uh, one of the coaching tips that I got is don't wait for motive or inspiration to happen. Inspiration comes after you've been in action. So whether it's writing, whether it's these practices of pouring the cup of coffee and talking to your loved one, get the ball moving by being in mm -hmm. action. And uh, I love putting the B be before being in action because be someone who believes, you know, be in the present moment, be open and even if you don't have any history of anything happening in the past, it doesn't matter. We can be happy just by declaring it. We can be successful by declaring it, be courageous. And once we start the being, then the actions will follow. And then, of course, the results follow. Arizona, is there something I haven't asked you that you want to share? Or is there something you're up to? Uh, it's just, it's about the end of the episode. So I just want to give you the floor if there's any closing words or anything else that you want to put in. Um, I mean, I think we, we, we covered a lot and I feel, I feel really good about it. And I just, I want to thank you. And I also want to say that, um, your presentation at the AREI on miraculous living was very, very inspirational. And the people that I went and saw it with, um, had never been to AREI before and they, thought it was one of the best talks that they saw. So I just want oh, to thank you for thank that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for it that. It was really, 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 really great. But oh. yeah, I, I just really appreciate you having me on. And yeah, it's if you want to find me, I'm spiritguidesmagazine.com. And like I said, I have the podcast, Spirit Guides Radio. And yeah, I would love to connect. So thank you so much for having me on this amazing show, We Don't Die. It's oh, truly a blessing. Thank you. And right back to you on all that good stuff. And for our listener, Arizona mentioned that, that speech that I gave. And just a few episodes ago, I decided to deliver that speech on one of the episodes. So if you missed seeing it at the AREI symposium, you can hear all about it on just one of the past episodes. I don't remember what number it is, but all episodes are on we don't die radio.com. And in addition, on we don't die radio.com, I have many things, but it, we are approaching the holiday period. This episode is being recorded just prior to our American Thanksgiving. And I know the holidays can be a very tough time without our loved one. And, you know, there's a lot of depression around the holidays. And it was just last year that Suzanne Wilson, which Arizona mentioned earlier, Suzanne and I recorded a video called The Afterlife and the Holidays. And so I actually have that recorded. And that's on we don't die radio.com under the store tab. It's it's very inexpensive, but it's um, something that I think will really make a difference. Also, I have written a PDF called Sandra's 19 Reasons to Believe in the Afterlife. So I think that's pretty inspirational. And it also says you can read several chapters from my book, We Don't Die. However, the secret is the whole book is there in PDF 
form. So you can read why I believe in the afterlife and the, I have an audio called how to survive grief. That's also there. We do have a big community called the We Don't Die Listeners Facebook group. So if you're a Facebook person, you can easily join that. There's about almost 4,000 members and you can share your grief. You can share your interest in the afterlife. You can just share from your heart and you are loved and accepted there. So please join us. So Arizona, one more time, thank you for being our guest today. Thank you so much, Sandra, for having me. It's so a pleasure and uh yeah, just really admire your work. Thank you. Oh, ditto to you. And like you say, live it up. There is hope. You know, this life is very important. You know, so anyways, in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. And as always, I'm delighted to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I personally do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So make it a great day. Be powerful, be courageous, find some fun. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon.